Yeah, that won't work with an old CD, but it's not that complicated either. Let's quickly go over how to install or reinstall a system on your Raspberry Pi. Start by downloading Raspberry Pi Imager. It's the easiest method. You can get it from the software tab on the official website. It's available for all operating systems, and you can even use it directly on a Raspberry Pi if you want. In the past, I recommended Etcher for this, but now I use Raspberry Pi Imager all the time. I'm not sure if Etcher is still an active project, and with it, you need to manually download the images for all systems. Raspberry Pi Imager, on the other hand, has most of them listed directly in the tool. It's still an option if you prefer another tool, but for beginners, I'd always recommend Imager. Install Imager on your computer, it's just a few clicks. Once it's done, you should see something like this. The interface is nice and intuitive, with three main steps to flash an SD card. It's simple and straightforward. First, select your Raspberry Pi device. This will filter the list of systems available in the second step, showing only what's compatible with it. Next, click on the Choose OS button, where you'll see a list of operating systems. This video focuses on installing Raspberry Pi OS, so you'll probably pick the first option. However, you can follow the same steps to try many other distributions compatible with Raspberry Pi, like Ubuntu, LibreLec, Kali Linux, or others. Once the system is selected, the next step is to choose your installation media. Insert your SD card into your computer and make sure to select the correct drive from the list. I don't want you accidentally erasing your backup USB drive or something else by choosing the wrong device. It's a bit messy on my computer, you'll probably have fewer options, but be careful anyway. Next, you'll be asked if you want to use the OS customization settings. It's a useful feature, but I'll come back to it at the end of the video to keep things simple for now. Just click No here, and the tool will start downloading and copying the system files to your SD card. Confirm the media erasure and enter your password if prompted, and that's it. Just wait a few minutes, and it will be ready soon. As soon as you get the right successful message, you can close the tool, eject your SD card from the computer, and insert it into the Raspberry Pi. We're ready for the first boot. After inserting the SD card and connecting all the accessories, monitor, keyboard, power supply, turn on the Raspberry Pi and check your display. You should see something like this. The Pi will perform a few initial steps in the background and reboot a few times. That's completely normal. Just wait until you see the welcome wizard. That's what I'm talking about. Before you can access the full interface, you'll need to set up a few things to configure your system. It's all pretty intuitive, so you shouldn't have any issues. Just click Next. Check that the settings on each page are correct, and keep clicking Next. You'll have the options to set your country, language, and time zone. Creating the first user is now mandatory. There's no default login and password anymore for security reasons. After that, you can connect to your Wi-Fi network if needed, or skip this step, you can always set it up later. You'll also have the option to choose your default web browser. Chromium and Firefox are now available by default. If you have internet access, you can update the system right away, which is recommended. Since I didn't configure my Wi-Fi, I'll skip it for now. That's it. One last reboot, and you'll have access to the full interface. Here it is. The Raspberry Pi OS interface is now available. See? It's Linux, but that doesn't mean it's just a black screen with weird command lines. It's actually pretty nice. You'll find the main menu in the top left corner and a few shortcuts on the right. For example, if you didn't set up your Wi-Fi, you can do it from there. Just click on the network icon, select your SSID, and type your password. I'll connect via Ethernet for now, it's just easier for me. If like me, you're just connecting to the internet at this step, the system will now update the date and time and check for system updates. You'll likely see a message saying that new updates are available. Make sure to install them before doing anything else. You've already done most of the configuration during the first boot via the welcome wizard, so there may not be much left to adjust. But let's take a quick look at your options. In the main menu, 
Under Preferences, you'll find the Raspberry Pi Configuration Tool, where most system settings are available. Here, you can change your password or host name, enable services, or adjust localization options. For example, I'm using a French keyboard but didn't select it during the first boot, so I can change it here. By the way, remember when I told you to skip the customization options in Raspberry Pi Imager? Well, if you reinstall your system as often as I do, you'll probably love this feature. If you choose to use it, you can predefine most settings for your system. Hostname, user and password, Wi-Fi settings, localization, etc. You can even enable SSH automatically on the first boot, which is super handy if you don't have a monitor. You fill out this form once, and Imager will remember all your settings for the next time you flash an SD card. It's a super useful feature once you're comfortable using it. But anyway, back to the system we just installed. There are a few other things you can configure if needed. First, go to Preferences and adjust the screen configuration, resolution, frequency, and orientation. If you're using a dual display, you can also adjust their positions here. In terms of appearance customization, there isn't much you can do on Raspberry Pi OS, but you can still tweak a few options. You can change the wallpaper if you don't like the default, adjust the menu position and size, modify fonts and colors, and things like that. It's pretty basic, but it can be really useful depending on your setup and habits. The last thing I want to show you is a few ways to install applications, as the system is pretty empty by default. There are a handful of pre-installed apps, but they won't get you very far, and installing new apps can be a bit confusing if you're a beginner. The first and easiest option is to use the recommended software tool, found in the main menu under Preferences. This tool lists applications approved by the Raspberry Pi manufacturer that can be installed with one click. Just find the app you want, check the box, click Install, and you're done. This tool is great, but very limited. For most other applications, you'll need to open another tool called Add Remove Software, also found under Preferences. It's a bit messy, as you'll see all Linux packages, dependencies, and more. But it's still more beginner-friendly than using command lines, so it's a good place to start. You need to know the name of the app you want to install. Type it into the search bar and look for it in the results. Hopefully, you'll find what you're looking for, and the installation can also be done in a few clicks. After a few seconds, the app will be installed and usually added to the main menu in the corresponding category. Good job, you're a pro now. System installed, configuration done, and you know how to install most apps on your system. You can now visit raspberrytips.com to access tons of free tutorials or try some fun projects. And if you want a more step-by-step -step approach or need help on something specific, you can join our community, check out my course, or grab one of my books. See you soon.